few authors are so seriously insincere as Oscar Wilde, and his masterpiece is aptly named The Importance of Being Earnest. Now, as the tale of Ernest Worthing, the wooing of his love, Gwendolyn Fairfax, and his showdown with her mother, the Lady Bracknell. Now, all of this play is famously unserious. It is also profound, a tale of honesty told through insincerity. Of course, it's also a satire, written by a first-rate satirist, and who really believes that a satirist means what he says? <laughs> so without further embellishment, I give you the importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde, most lovingly savage by myself. <laughs> <laughs> My dear Ernest, what brings you uptown? Oh, pleasure, pleasure. But I should take one anywhere. Where have you been since last Thursday? Oh, in the country. What on earth do you do there? Amuse other people. It's excessively boring. <laughs> hey, what kind of people do you amuse? Oh, neighbours and... Uh, neighbours. <laughs> You've got nice neighbours, you put a shop child. Perfectly horrid. Sandwiches? Why such reckless extravagance in one so, uh, young? <laughs> Who's coming to tea? Oh, uh, merely Aunt Augusta and, uh, Gwendolyn. How perfectly delightful. Oh, yes, that's all very well. But I don't think Aunt Augusta will quite approve of your being here. May I ask why not? My dear fellow, the way you flirt with Gwendolyn is perfectly disgraceful. <laughs> It's almost as bad as the way that Gwendolyn flirts with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love with Gwendolyn, and I came up to her expressly to propose to her. I thought she would come up for pleasure. <laughs> Lady Bracknell. Charming day has been this way. Oh, they don't talk to me about the weather, Mr. Bracknell. <laughs> <laughs> you more than any girl I have ever met since I met you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm quite well aware of the fact. Uh, but we're here, as you know, Mr. Worthing, in an age of ideals. And my idea has always been to love someone to the name of Ernest. <laughs> and there is something in that name that inspires absolute confidence. I knew from the first moment that Algernon mentioned to me that I Ernest that I was destined to love you. You really love me, Gwendolyn? Passionately! Darling! <laughs> you don't know how happy you've made me. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ernest! Gwendolyn, we must get married at once. Mary! Yes, you know that I love you, Gwendolyn. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> You've been so long in asking. I'm afraid you don't have very much experience in proposing. But I've never loved anyone in the world but you. Oh, yes, but men often propose for practice. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-nine. Now that is 
he's a very good age to get married at. Now, I have always been of the opinion that the man who desired to get married should know either everything or nothing. <laughs> Which do you know? <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> I am pleased to hear it. I do not approve of anything that tumbles with natural ignorance. Ignorance is like a delicate, exotic fruit. Touch it, and the bloom is gone. <laughs> Unfortunately, in England, education produces no effect whatsoever. <laughs> Are your parents living? Uh, I'm afraid I've lost. Both my parents. <gasps> to lose one parent, Mr. Wells, might be regarded as misfortune. <laughs> but to lose both? It resembles carelessness. Who was your father? He was evidently a man of uh, some wealth. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I don't really know. You see, Lady Bracknell, I said that I had lost my parents, but it would be quite near the truth to say that my parents had lost me. I don't rightly know who I am by birth because I was, well, I was found. Found! <laughs> In a handbag. A handbag! <laughs> the late Mr. Thomas Carney, an elegant gentleman of extremely terrible and healthy disposition, he found me and he took me in and he gave me the name of work because he happened to have a first-class ticket to Worthing in his pocket time. <laughs> it is in Sussex. It's in Sussex. <clears throat> and where did this Mr. James or, or, or Thomas Cardew find this handbag? In the cloakroom of Victoria Station. It was given to him in mistake for his own. Mm -hmm. Now, I would advise you, Mr. Worthing, to make a definite effort to produce some relations as soon as possible. And at any rate, one parent before the season is quite out. Uh, I don't see how I could possibly manage to do that. <laughs> but I can get the handbag for you at any moment. It's in my dressing room at home. <laughs> that really should satisfy you, Lady Bracknell. Me, sir? What has it got to do with me? <laughs> you can hardly imagine that <laughs> I am Lord Bracknell who raised your daughter with the utmost care and attention should allow her to marry into a cloak womb <laughs> <laughs> to form an alliance with a parcel? Had I go over all boy, you know me to say that Gwendolyn refused you. No. Gwendolyn's <laughs> <laughs> as right as a trivet. As far as she's concerned, we're engaged, but... Her mother... <laughs> ...is perfectly unbearable. I've never met such a, a perfect... Gorgon! <laughs> <laughs> I don't rightly know what a Gorgon is like. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, she is a monster. Well, I'm sorry, Algie. I shouldn't talk about your own aunt in that way before. <laughs> my dear fellow, I love hearing my relations abused. <laughs> <laughs> relations are simply people who haven't got the slightest instinct of how to live, nor the slightest knowledge of when to die. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Algie, you don't think there's a chance that Gwendolyn might grow to be like her mother? In about 150 years. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Miss Fair. Oh, I wish I knew we would never be married. And the look on Mama's face, I fear we never shall. Whatever influence I ever had over Mama, I lost at the age of three. <laughs> <laughs> Understand that all communication between yourself and my daughter 
must cease from this moment on. On this point, as indeed on every point, I am fair. But I am engaged to be married to Gwendolyn Lady Bracknell. You are nothing of the kind, sir. Uh, Who was your father? Um. What are your politics? Ah, uh, what is your income? Oh, about a hundred and fifty thousand pounds a year in the funds. Lady Bracknell, so pleased to have seen you. A moment! <laughs> a hundred and thirty thousand pounds and in the phone. <laughs> to speak frankly, I am not in favour of long engagements. <laughs> Opportunity of finding out each other's character before marriage. Which is never advisable. <laughs> <laughs> and neither am I in favour of mercenary engagements. When I married Lord Workman, I had no fortune of any kind. But I didn't even know that letting that stand in my way. But I suppose I must do my consent. Thank you, Lady Bracknell. Gwendolen. Ernest! The good ended happily, and the bad unhappily. That is what fiction is. <laughs>